about uh, 7 p.m. on a Sunday and I'm back in the van and the van is all packed up uh, to go away to the hill country for a few days. Just going to go visit some friends. Uh, I just, I, I don't want to stay in Houston right now. Um, I have um, about, I don't know, maybe like two weeks or just over a week. Um, before I have like anything else that I really need to do in Houston, um, but I do have an appointment on Wednesday So it is Sunday night and I was going to leave tomorrow morning But it's going to rain and I figured well I'm done with everything today I might as well get in the van and just head on the road now in case we have another cold spell Which we're probably going to have the weather's been crazy. Uh, it's about 42 degrees. It's pretty cold right now There's a wind chill um, But yes, yeah, so I'm uh, heading out a uh, two-hour drive from Houston. Well, two-hour drive from my storage unit uh, to uh, uh, North, uh, well, Georgetown area. So I'm going to go up there, uh, hang with friends. Uh, I got parking privileges, so that's great. Um, and yeah, just kind of chill for a few days and then come back Wednesday uh, to go do my appointment. Uh, Harriet also has a, an appointment at the same time as mine. Um, so I'm going to figure that out because um, mine's my annual checkup and I need to have that done. Uh, I've been delaying it because I've been uh, having to reschedule for whatever reasons. And it's the VA, so you know, it's a hurry up and wait kind of thing like in the army. Anyway, so yeah, this will be good. Um, I just quickly packed the van up with just a few days of stuff, a couple of snacks and things. I'll be in civilization, so I have food, I'm not too worried. Um, but I did forget my porta potty, so I had to drive all the way back home. Uh, after being 20 minutes on the road, drive all the way back home and all the way back out. So I'm about just over an hour late leaving um, and trying to get used to being in the van again, you know, the Humunga van, which is significantly larger than my uh, my SUV. And you can't see me at all because it's pitch black. So yeah, this will be fun. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got a list of other stuff, like in case like my friends are working, uh, since, you know, they all have regular jobs. Uh, so I've got some things like some museums and stuff that I can go check out if I have uh, time or if I feel like it. Um, I've got computer stuff I need to work on. So yeah, I just figured it'll be more social to be out with friends uh, working out there than it would be uh, just sitting in my house. <laughs> so yeah, so it's just kind of spur of the moment, just quickly packed up the van late uh, this evening um, and just, you know, getting on the road. So it's good. She sounds good. She feels good. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's um, about two hours and five minutes uh, to, uh, to North Austin. So it'll be good. I have my bike, not the fancy bike. I just have my hardtail in case I want to go for a ride like in uh, town, around Town Lake. I've got my rollerblades in case I want to do that. Um, See, so yeah, I've got all my toys. I could just have brought the car because I could just stay at my friend's RV. But uh, I just figured it's easier if I have the van because then I've got everything. And you know, I can, uh, if I have to come back to Houston on Wednesday just for my appointment, I might turn around and go back out there um, for the rest of the week. So we'll see. We'll play it by ear, as they say, as the kids say. Um, but it's good to be back in the van for a few days. And I mean, what would I do? I would just be sitting in my house. So. Uh, it's too, it's going to be raining all week anyway, so I can't do my bike ride at home. I'm kind of over ice skating right now. It's just uh, getting a little crazy and the ice isn't really that great at the moment uh, compared to like how it should be just because when public skate is happening, you've got all the kids pushing those little plastic things. Um, you've got like figured out skaters. Um, you've just got just a lot of chaos and it kind of rips up the ride, uh, rips up the ride, rips up the ice quite a bit and uh, plus it's so crowded that yesterday when I was skating I just I was just like packed in like sardines so I'd rather skate like when you know the Christmas break and all that has finally died down and when uh, everybody's like fully back into school which I think some schools didn't go back until last week actually it was kind of crazy okay so yeah so just a two hour drive and I'll check in with you whatever I'm going to do this week so I know I'm going to be chilling uh, my friend's going to cook so that'll be great I might sort the van out. The van's fully clean now, so I don't have a lot of other stuff to do housekeeping wise. Um, but it will be nice to just kind of I don't know, just be just be out and about, you know, different surroundings for a bit. Plus, I would be a school even loser right now, but obviously for more much more important reasons, I am here in Houston. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, here in Houston, which is fine because it's you know it's um, more on that later. But yeah, it's uh, very necessary for me to be home right now. Um, but, you know, in between needing to be home
said, no, it needs to remain free. Like, we don't want to be paying anything for registration. That's BS. Uh, it's on public land. Like, we don't want to move it to private land. Uh, so the, the people that were trying to uh, commercialize it, they pretty much got vetoed. So what's nice is that um, it's still free, but apparently, like, I'm just hearing horror stories. You know, just like, there's no, like, Night Owl and Day J separate areas. Like, the people blasting music to, like, you know, two, three in the morning and still at 6 a.m. blasting music passed out from, you know, whatever substances they're taking. So it's kind of like Woodstock, you know, it's just, I don't do any of that stuff. I'm happy just to be there to be there, but I've never been. And apparently it's just, it's not the same as it used to be. I think because during the pandemic, everybody got a van. So it's just kind of become this like, you know, not Woodstock in the 60s, which would be my thing, you know, all peace and love. No, it's more like Woodstock 99, where it was like, you know, a cesspool of sewage. <laughs> uh, if you ever see the documentary, I think it's on Netflix, of like just the, the destruction that uh, Woodstock 99 caused and just how bad it was. And the thing is that that's my generation, Generation X. Like I'm not proud of that part of my generation that, that just completely destroyed the stage. The whole thing set on fire. People were getting trench mail, which is when you drink like sewage water. There was just like mud and like crap everywhere. I mean, it was horrible. It was like um, last year, where was it that everyone got flooded in last year? I don't remember. There was one of the van meetups. I, I don't think it was Descend on Ben. I think it might have been Schooly Palooza. No, no, it was Burning Man. Burning Man, where everybody got um, stuck in the sludge and it got like rained out. Like there was just torrential rain and everything got destroyed. That's pretty much what Woodstock 99 was. And from what I'm hearing, Schooly Palooza is going in that same direction. So I'm fine not going to Schooly Palooza. Um, I'm, there's some, there's some other, other really, really good meetups that I've seen. But I'm not going to go out of my way to go to them. It's more like if I happen to be in the area. Um, like last year, you know, I kind of missed everything because I was on a different schedule, like different trajectory. But if I uh, happen to be in an area and there's a meetup, um, there's also a Beatles meetup that someone told me about uh, in like the East Coast, I think the Northeast. But it's like $160 registration. I said, wait a minute, I am an honorary, I'm an honorary Beatles fan. I was interviewed on Sirius XM radio not too long ago, a couple months ago, while I was driving from Vegas down to uh, Ventura County. I think it was uh, like last summer, like before the summer started. And uh, I got to go on uh, the, the Fab Forum and they asked me, like, you had to talk about anything. And I called up and I was like, you guys, I'm in a van that is all Beatles. And I got interviewed and I recorded it, recorded me talking on it. I've got it somewhere. I think it's on my daughter's phone. But it was so funny. And they were like, well, that's but like you can tell they were kind of confused like okay never heard that one before um a van, you know Beatles van and uh they asked me like where can they find me and I was like I don't know I'm around you know just kind of heading heading wherever but it was really fun I've never been never been on the radio like that before so I think I should get in for free because I have a Beatles van <laughs> so I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be an asshole I'm gonna write to them and say look you guys literally do you know how much time and effort it took for me to make my van who else going to this van meetup has a beatles van there'll probably be a yellow submarine van there or something or a vw bus like you know painted like whatever i guarantee you be a bunch of hippies but that that sounds fun i would love to go to that it's like i think it lasts like three days but no i'm not paying 160 dollars to go you know spread my beatles loins <laughs> you know and just like gush love for that the van that i i'm a big fan of no, I'm not going to do that. Um, so yeah, I'll write to them and I'll see if maybe they can, you know, I'll send them my tiny home tours video and say, look guys, see proof, proof that I literally have a Beatles van. So let me in for free. I'll even showcase it. People can just like ogle it if they want to. I'll be one of those people, you know, like, you know, please come into my van and here's my toilet. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, so I'm driving now. I've got less than two hours. Easy drive. I've done this drive probably 600 times because I used to date someone in Austin. So um, I have I have driven this, this the 10 to the 71 to the uh, uh, 183. And then, well, I'm, I'm going to Georgetown, so I'm gonna be probably on one of the toll roads going north. So still an easy drive, um, kind of a no-brainer. Stop at the Bucky's, you know, about 30 minutes from Austin so I can go pee. And yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a no-brainer. Um, but yeah, 
having a, a quote long distance relationship with somebody in the next city. In Texas, the next city is two and a half hours away. <laughs> so I was loyal, damn it. I was dedicated and loyal for, for quite a number of years. And uh, yeah, but then I wanted to build a band and I wanted to travel. So it ran its course, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I still have a lot of friends out there, a lot of high school friends. I have a lot of um, old co-workers from California that if they didn't go to Portland, uh, they ended up in Austin. Um, and I've just got some friends that I've met, you know, over the years that, you know, live there. But if everybody, all those friends were in the same room, they wouldn't, they're not all friends with each other. That's what's kind of funny. They're all kind of different pockets of, um, different pockets of Austin. And I always am like that with my friends group. Like, all of my friends are so unique and different from each other that I think they would all get along, but they, they wouldn't necessarily know each other before I met them. So it's not like I'm only friends with like the jocks or the, you know, the popular kids or the, you know, the weird foreign accent people like me. <laughs> so, um, but that's the thing is because I never quite fit in anywhere because I sound different. You know, it's just, I'm, I don't know, it's, I'm a different, you know, life perspective, background, you know, it's just I kind of gravitate toward everybody for different reasons. And, and um, you know, I'm a woman of the world. So, anyway, but I, all my friends are great. They're fantastic. And I'm uh, super grateful to be able to see them when I can, um, which isn't always very easy these days. Um, but yeah, it'll be nice to go out there, um, just chill for a bit, and maybe maybe try to reunite with a couple of people I haven't seen since the pandemic. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Then, whatever, or I might just chill, around, chill and, you know, just watch Netflix for three days and good filet mignon and that's about it <laughs> so, we'll cook it on the grill oh my god blinded light turn your high beams down dude anyway okay that's it i will chat with you whenever i get there but happy to be back in the van and she's sounding fantastic i've got a oil change registration's on its way and uh yeah i will see you when i see you Okay, I've made it to the RV park, so I'm gonna stay here tonight. It's very cold, it's like 36 degrees. So it's also raining, but the roads weren't too bad. It took me exactly two hours to get here from my storage unit. Now I just have to remember where the hell I'm supposed to park. <laughs> so I don't remember. Which one is it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, they all look the same. <laughs> They're like my unique van. Okay, I think it's over here. goodness. <laughs> That's good. Good evening. It is Monday and I'm in the Cracker Barrel in Round Rock. Now, if you have any trouble, as they say, finding parking in, uh, in Austin, just head up the road about 20 minutes to Round Rock and you can park in the beautiful um, Cracker Barrel parking lot. Where I think there's a party going on in the SUV over there. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Anyway, I'm just going to park here. I've stayed here before, um, but tomorrow morning, super, super early, because I have to go back to Houston. So I came down here because super early, I'm going to go for a hike in uh, Cedar Cedar Breaks, I think it is. Um, yeah, I think it's Cedar Breaks Park, and I don't want to park here. I want to park near a dumpster. Um, yeah, Cedar Breaks Park. It's like a nine-mile hike to Tejas, and it's uh, Army Corps of Engineer um, Park. So it's it's pretty cool. What is going on in there? There is like string lights and anyway, there's another RV over there and I'm gonna park in, there's a, well, there's a truck. I don't wanna park next to the truck. I'm gonna park way off in the corner. Anyway, so Cracker Barrel is great. So this is a great place to stay for free. Uh, if you don't, um, if you don't really have anywhere to stay in uh, Austin, which is pretty much the truth. Although you can park in like, um, <clears throat> sorry, the uh, South, what is it? You can park in the, uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to find parking here. Um, you can park in uh, South Congress area, uh, no problem. So if you park there, um, you will 
uh, just kind of blend in because there's lots of like vans and stuff. But Zilker Park, you're not allowed to park in because I got a um, warning. I didn't, I've never gotten a ticket or anything ever, not even a parking ticket. But I got a citation uh, warning um, that you can't park there. So actually, I think I'm just going to park right here where I was before and hopefully no one will park next to me. Yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, just um, the RV parking at Cracker Barrel. So I'm very tired. I had a really fun visit, um, but I wanted to just kind of get out of there because I needed to get as close to the trailhead as possible because uh, I do need uh, to get back to Houston uh, Tuesday night. So that is the goal. So I've got an appointment on Wednesday and I was going to leave Wednesday morning, but with the weather the way it is, it's better if I just leave uh, Tuesday night. So, or Tuesday right after I'm done with the hike. So um, yeah, so it was a quick trip to Georgetown. Um, I'm trying to get, um, I had to get some stuff fixed on my van but the rain was so bad that that's why I went up there because my friend fixes RVs and I was just like yeah if you can fix my door this is the door sensor so the door will close and my Viper alarm will be properly activated um, but it just rained and rained and rained so we just watched movies all day and cooked Thai food and I was like okay well you know I'll have to come back another time so I just wanted to yeah I just wanted to get out of there and go uh, to my hike for tomorrow super early it's probably gonna rain again and then uh, yeah just get back to Houston so it's good to get prudence out even if, if it's for just like two days um, I you know obviously can't do any really big trips right now um, but you know it's uh, eventually one day well Harriet's too young right now to sit in the front seat and I don't have a back seat for her so if uh, she does want to go on a road trip we'll, we'll take the car and we'll go stay in some cool Airbnbs or something but in the meantime I'm just gonna um, watch some YouTube and just kind of warm up a little bit and uh, yeah head to bed so it's about 9.30, so it's good. It's good to be back in Prudence. And it's funny, like even if I'm like staying with friends and stuff, I still wanna sleep in the uh, in the van. <laughs> it's like, it's so much more comfortable. I'm just, I'm disappointed that I wasn't able to get the uh, door fixed uh, and that I did have to drive all the way up here to do it, but it's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out next time. I think if I just put washers behind the uh, door sensors, it'll push the door sensors closer because I think they're just not contacting enough and it makes it think that my side door is open and then the Viper alarm doesn't activate. Um, I can turn the alarm on and then lock the doors on the inside um, because right now if I just activate it from the outside, it just unlocks all the doors because it thinks the side door is open. So it goes beep, beep, and then click and opens all the doors. So on the inside, I can set the alarm, close the door, like lock the doors on the inside and that way the alarm's uh, activated and the doors are locked. So that's, you know, the end goal of having a Viper alarm. Anyway, I'm very tired. I'm gonna to go to bed and then get up at like 5 a.m. tomorrow, just like the good old days of van life, and go do my hike super early. I think it gets light, I don't know. I think it still gets light at like seven. Let me take a look here on the weather tomorrow. Tomorrow it will be raining. <laughs> Let's see. I'm in Round Rock right now. So again, the Round Rock Cracker Barrel, it's right off uh, the 35 and um, yeah, so it's gonna rain. I don't get. I can hike in the rain. It's fine. It's gonna rain all morning. Sixty percent chance of rain. It's a nice hike. It's fully shaded, and I tried riding my bike on it, but it was near to impossible. Even though it is a mountain bike trail, it was more like double black diamond, super technical. Not in the steep way, but just like it was so rocky, and I didn't have the right bike. I had just my like crappy, um, like Reed mountain bike that I got for like two hundred dollars because I needed a mountain bike like urgently. Uh, 7.30 the sun will come up. So yeah, so I'll do the hike. It's nine miles. It'll probably take me three hours. That'll put me back in Houston about mid-afternoon. Uh, drop the van off, pick up the car and go home. And yeah, so it's good. It's a nice break. I needed just, you know, to get out. There's a ton of stuff I could do in Georgetown and like museums and things. And But it's like, I, you know, I, I'd only do that like after I do the outdoor adventure stuff because primarily that's my goal with van life is to get outdoors as much as possible. But yeah, the rain is really bad. And uh, I just, it rained literally all day today. Um, so yeah, I got in late last night at like 10 o'clock last night. And so, um, you know, just basically uh, went to bed. I, I slept on the couch in my friend's uh, RV. And then this morning we were gonna fix the door and go for a run and all this stuff. And it was just like, it was just so, <laughs> it was so rainy all day and cold and windy. And so we're like, you know what, let's just make Thai food and watch movies and chat and catch up and stuff. So we did that and then, yeah, and then I said, well, I just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get back. I don't want to be stuck up there. If it's going to, you know, rain again, I, I don't want to be stuck all the way up in Georgetown. So anyway, but I'm going to be back up there early in the morning to go hike. I just, I'd rather stay at the Cracker Barrel and just be in the van and kind of do my own thing. Um, because, you know, like in the RV park, everyone's got generators going and it is quite loud. And believe it or not, like the Cracker Barrel right by the 
35 freeway is actually quieter. So I was like, I, cause I, I didn't sleep very well last night. I was like wired from driving, you know, three hours to get over here in the rain. And I just was like, I don't, I don't want to, you know, like sleep through, try to sleep through generators again. Cause I mean, you're, the RVs are right next to each other, like 10 feet away from each other. And the, the neighbors just blast their TV. So I didn't really sleep very well last night at all. I think I got like, I don't know, five, six hours sleep, which was not, not great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's nice to see those, you know, million dollar RVs. <laughs> that will never be me. I could not imagine driving. I think we talked about driving somewhere like on a trip, but I don't know. I'm like, I'll follow you in Prudence. <laughs> I don't know if I want to drive in one of those big humongous things. Uh, anyway, but yeah, back in Peru and um, yeah, no other maintenance stuff to do on her except the door. So I'll do that when I'll, I'll do that when I'm back in Houston. I'll just watch YouTube and try to figure it out. I just don't know if I can do it with my wrist because I still can't use power tools and stuff and can't open pasta jars or like do intricate wiring. So I just, I'd rather have someone else help me do it. So, oh well, we'll leave that for another day, but I will see you, I guess on the next episode when I'm hiking tomorrow. So, all right. Okay. Bye-bye.